Jesus falling in love with Jesus falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I've ever ever done how many of you can Say, that was the best thing you've ever done. Falling in love with Jesus. My Lord. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I've ever, ever done. In his arms. Yes, Lord. In his arms, I feel protected. In his arms, never disconnected. Oh, no. In his arms, I There's no place I'd rather, rather be. Come on, let's sing it one more time. There's no place I'd rather, rather be. Come on, can you say that? There's no place I'd rather, rather be. You could have chose anywhere to go today. But there's no place I'd rather, rather be. Look at your neighbor and say, no place I'd rather rather be sing it to him there's no place I'd rather mm. rather be love is special yeah, yeah, yeah. and we can't take love for granted see what we find we find ourselves falling in love with materialistic things but that's not going to save us Sometimes we even find ourselves falling in love with the wrong person. But when you fall in love with Jesus, he'll never leave you. He'll never disappoint you. He'll never let you down. He's always right there by your side. Come on, let's sing it one more time, Michael. There's no place I'd rather, rather be. No, cause there's no place I'd rather, rather be. Thank you, Lord. There's no place I'd rather, rather be. Come on, give God a hand for clap of praise right there. You can do better than that. Father, we thank you for your anointing today. Hide me behind the cross. It is not me, but it's you. Speak through me. Let your anointing be upon me. Don't let your word fall on deaf ears. Don't let the people just be a hearer of your word, but a doer of your word. Today we celebrate you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. John chapter 12, 
verse 12 through 11. John chapter 12, I won't be before you long today. John chapter 12, verse 12 through 13. Once you have that, let's stand in reverence to the scripture reading, if you will, those of you that are able to. I know you're getting your exercise on today, aren't you? Some of us can use it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John chapter 12, verse 12 through 13. I'm reading from the New King James Version. The next day. A great multitude had that had came that had come to feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. You may be seated. The four Gospels that we find in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the first three are usually uh, referred to as the synoptic gospel because they look at the same things and they're very similar in their writing. But if you notice John, John doesn't go into uh, the details of the family tree, the lineage, and all the things that Matthew and Mark goes into. But John is more specific. John lets us know that Jesus is the word of God, very direct. John lets us know that the word incarnate. He also lets us know that the word was made flesh. And John points out that the other Gospels, the things that they don't, and hang in here with me. Over in Matthew chapter 21, verse 8, he says, And very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Here we go. Others cut down branches from the trees and and spread them on the road. Didn't mention anything about a specific tree. Now, you look at Mark chapter 11, verse 8, and how many spread their clothes on the road, and the others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. You see, they don't tell us what kind of tree. John wants us to know the specifics. The palm tree symbolizes something that the other trees do not. And the palm tree and the palm branches, they symbolize victory, triumph, peace, and eternal life. Look at your neighbor and say, I've got the victory. I got the victory. No, y'all, y'all, look at the other neighbor because that one right there ain't talking to you. Look at the other neighbor and say, I've got the victory. Got the victory. Okay, come on. Let, yeah, you know that. I'm going to talk to this side because y'all look like y'all a little sleepy this morning. Look at your neighbor and say, I've got the victory. I've got the victory. Oh, okay then. What well, y'all awake over here? Look at your neighbor and say, I've got the victory. I've got the All right, come on, because y'all here we go. Here we go. We're going for a ride. You remember Deborah in Judges? Uh, the, she was a prophet. The wife of uh, Lipido was leading the children of Israel at that time. And over in Judges chapter 4, verse 5, it says, and she sit. Under the palm tree between uh, Ramah and Bethel in the mountains of Ephraim, and the children of Israel would come to her so that she can judge them. And under the palm tree, she brought peace to those that were confused, and she brought victory to those that were struggling. See, sometimes you got to have a place of refuge. Sometimes you got to have somewhere where you can steal away 
Sometimes you got to have somebody where you can talk to that's not going to judge you. When Jesus came into Jerusalem, he didn't come in a chariot. See, most, most all the kings uh, would show up in, in the big chariots. The president of the United States shows up in his entourage with all the escalades and the blacked out windows. Uh, but that's not what Jesus did. Uh, Jesus didn't roll up in a Bentley, nor did he roll up in a Rolls Royce. But he came in Jerusalem riding a donkey. Jesus had to let them know that he was here to fulfill prophecy. And he said, I don't have to look like everybody else. And I don't have to talk like everybody else. And I am who I am. And riding on a donkey, I'm still the word made flesh. I'm still the son of God. Come on, somebody. The scripture says that they took palm branches and some took their clothes off and laid them on the ground so that even the donkey's hoofs wouldn't touch the ground. Shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed be the rock. Blessed is the king of Israel who comes in the name of the Lord. And here you find in Luke, just like Matthew and Mark, he doesn't mention anything about the trees. Luke, Luke 19 says it like this, and he was now drawing near to descent of the Mount of Olives. The whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. And I want you to pay attention to that. Luke wanted us to know who was in the crowd. <laughs> and there were two multitudes or two crowds of people, if you will. One crowd met Jesus in Jerusalem. And the other crowd was with him coming from Galilee. So there were two crowds of people, one following Jesus and one that was already there in Jerusalem. And there were the ones who helped him prepare for the ride. And, and then you had those who he told to go down and find the donkey and the coat and loose them, bring them to me. And just like most people, when, when you're doing something that somebody asks you to do, they want to be nosy. What you doing? Who told you to do that? Come on, somebody. Huh? But God says, tell them the master have need of them. <laughs> you ever had a moment where you look at somebody and say, it ain't your business. Oh, see, y'all, 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 y'all real, real, real sanctified this morning. Huh? I know it's Palm Sunday. Come on. But you, you, you ever looked at somebody and said, that's none of your business. Well, see, Jesus sent them on a journey. And he just politely told them, the master have need. Now, some may have knew, what, knew know who the master was, and most of them probably didn't. But the crowd that was following Jesus, they were testing who he was. <laughs> While the crowd that was already in Jerusalem, they was asking, who is he? Who is he? And Luke says, the whole multitude of the disciples, here we go, began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice from all of the mighty works that they had seen. And right here, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever seen God do anything in your life? Oh, y'all pretty slow. I'm going to ask you again. Have you ever seen God do anything in your life? Huh? Well, take a quick praise break and think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for you. Come on, it says, my soul cries out. Hosanna. 
<laughs> See, they were being they 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 were being tested. They was they was asking, who who is this man? But the people that was the multitude that was with Jesus, they saw the works that he was doing. Huh? So it didn't take a lot of faith for them to believe. But for us, because in the spirit world, we don't see it. So it's tough for some time for us to believe. But the Bible says, faith without works is, come on somebody. So if you're not moving, if you're not doing anything, you might as well be six feet under. That's what the word says, you're dead. Huh? And, 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 and what I find is that sometimes, perhaps if you're not saying anything and you're not motivated and you're not moving, it's probably because you hadn't seen anything. Because you've got to recognize who Jesus is in the spiritual world. Even the non-believers can recognize when God does something. Y'all ain't saying nothing. When you've seen God work, you can't help but to rejoice and praise God. When you've seen God heal your body, when you've seen God raise up somebody out of the hospital that was on their dying bed, when you've seen the hand of God touch your marriage, when you've seen the hand of God touch your children. <laughs> I get joy when I think about it. I have to believe when Jesus was entering Jerusalem, blind Barnabas, uh, he was at the gate. Blind, he, he, he was a blind beggar. And he was told by the crowd, be quiet. Shh. Don't say nothing. Ain't nobody got time for that. But he kept on until he got Jesus' attention. And when he got Jesus' attention, Jesus said, bring him to me. And he asked him a question. What can I do for you? Huh? Have you ever got Jesus' attention? Well, you cried out so long. And you finally got his attention. And he just asked you, what can I do for you? And blind Bonabelle said, I'm blind and I can't see. I want to see. Huh? Jesus touched him. And he said, go. And as he went, his eyes became open. Come on, somebody. I have to believe when Jesus and the crowd had gotten a little further down the road, the woman with the issue of blood. So you got to understand, walk this journey with me. See, they, they're going through Jerusalem as a crowd. A crowd of people. Huh? And Jesus is still working miracles. The woman with the issue of blood was pushing through the crowd. And as she was pushing through the crowd, I believe she was saying, I've got to get to him. I've got to get to him. But see, you got to understand, she spent all her money on the doctors. She had nothing else left. She was broke, busted, disgusted, and bleeding. Mm, come on, somebody. But the great physician was coming by. The great physician was coming by. The great physician is coming by your house. Huh? He's coming by your house. He's heard your prayers. He's seen your tears. And he said, what can I do for you? Be specific. Be direct. Because he wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. And he wants to set you free. And when she touched the hem of his garment, 
Immediately, the blood stopped. Immediately, she became whole, healed, and delivered. It was her faith. It was her faith. It was her faith. Where's your faith? Where is your faith? My faith is in the Lord. My trust is in the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Nobody. 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 I have to believe that when Jesus went a little further, the ten lepers were standing by the wayside. They hollered out, Jesus, have mercy on me. Jesus said, go, show yourselves to the priest. Come on, somebody. It don't take God long to do nothing. It don't take God long to answer your prayers. It don't take God long. was passing under the tree something caught his attention and he stopped and he looked up and that was a wee little man his name was Zacchaeus Zacchaeus had to climb the tree because he couldn't see Jesus because of the crowd see God had a following Y'all think y'all got a following with TikTok, Facebook, and all that? But that ain't no following. That, help me, Holy Ghost. That's not a following. That's folks being nosy. That's folks trying to be in your business. But the problem is, you keep feeding them. You keep feeding them. You keep feeding them. Feeding them foolishness. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But Zacchaeus was a tax collector. He was overcharging people, the folks in the community, trying to be greedy. But when the Lord stopped and he looked up and he told Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house. Zacchaeus, let's go. Because the anointing that was on Zacchaeus, even though he wasn't lining up with the word. See, God don't care. God looks at the heart, and he knew Zacchaeus' heart. So he looked at his heart, and he touched him because when he saw Zacchaeus reposition himself, who is this man? Who is this Messiah? Who is this person? Who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? <laughs> you, you've got to reposition yourself to get the blessing of the Lord. God is standing there waiting to sprinkle you with anointings, blessings, books, businesses, creative ideas. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But you got to be in the position. You got to be in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing. <laughs> yes, sir. There were 5,000 hungry souls fed with two fish and five loaves of bread. Jesus looked up to heaven blessed them before he gave it to the disciples. And when he gave it to the disciples, they began to distribute. They gave it to the crowd. Two fish, five loaves, a sack lunch that a little boy had. But little is much 
when you place it in the master's hand. Hey, many that were in the crowd, they had, was wondering, is this who what Moses was talking about? Is this the person that Moses was talking about? Is this the one that the prophet of old was prophesying about? And while many were shouting, Hosanna, on Palm Sunday, on Thursday, they were saying, crucify him. I said, the folks that was following Jesus throughout the next three days, for whatever reason, they began to doubt what they saw. And they got mixed in the crowd that for folks that was already in Jerusalem that was wondering, who is he? So they, faith failed. And they joined forces on from Sunday, Palm Sunday, to Thursday, saying, crucify him. We don't know the man. How many of you has crossed over and saying, I don't know the man? Huh? Y'all ain't saying nothing. You got to be careful because the anointing yesterday, it ain't going to hold you for today. You got to renew your mind every day. You got to renew your spirit every day. You got to fall on your knees and pray to God every day, every day, every night. Sunday. This is Palm Sunday. He was the king on Palm Sunday. But Thursday, crucify him. But when you have a form of godliness, you have no power. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I said when you have a form of godliness, you deny the power. It's okay for you to show up in church on Sunday. But on Monday morning, do you still have the same Holy Ghost that you were shouting and running around in here on Sunday? When somebody call you and lie on you, do you still have the same Holy Ghost that you had on Sunday? When somebody mistreats you, do you have the same Holy Ghost that you had on Sunday? On Wednesday morning, when you get to the job and they tell you, today is your last day, they give you a pink slip. Are you going to get mad, try to cuss somebody out? Are you going to say, thanks be to God, from whom all blessings flow? Mm. Jesus real. Victory. 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 I've got the victory. I've got the victory. Got the victory. Jesus' real victory didn't come riding on a donkey. His real victory didn't come while the crowd was shouting, Hosanna. But his real victory came when they nailed him to the cross. They hung him high, they stretched him wide, they pierced him in his side. He said, It is finished. He hung his hand in 
the locks of his shoulder. The real victory. I've got the victory. Tell somebody, I've got the victory. I've got the victory. When they put him in the tomb, the spirit that was in his body left, and he went down into the anti-delusion world, found both persons who lived in the time of Noah, <laughs> preached the gospel. He preached the good news in hell. Three days later, the same spirit returned back into his body. And look at somebody. It's there early. I'm bringing this message to a close. I'm about to land this plane. But there's one thing I want you to know. When he got up, he was dangling some keys. Somebody give me a set of keys. Somebody give me a quick set of keys. He was dangling some keys. Huh? He was dangling some keys. And what he was saying, all power of heaven and earth is in my hand. All power of heaven and earth is in my hand. I've got it. Revelations 7 and 9 says, After these things, 
I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number. All nations, all tribes, people and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb of God clothed with white robes with waving palm branches in their hands saying we've got the victory we've got the victory we've got the victory we've got the victory How did they get the victory? How did they get the victory? They overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. Look at somebody and tell them, I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. I've got the victory. I've got the victory. If you got the victory, wave that palm branch. Victory. I've got it. Victory, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory.